Hello? Yeah. To begin with, can you say your name? My name is uh, Kuang Fu Ha. And when were you born? I was uh, born in uh, 1941. So to set the scene of the story, could you describe for us your life in the 1970s, in the years before the end of the war? I, I was an officer of the Vietnamese Navy. Before that, I was from the Merchant Marine. I was a captain of the Mutual Marine, and then when I get into the, uh, then when I get mobilized, nineteen sixty-five, nineteen sixty-six, I would say, uh, and uh, after nine months at the uh, Thủ Đức. Uh, um, at Thủ Đức Center, I was sent to, to the Vietnamese Navy. And I was there until 1971. And then I was uh, sent back to my own Merchant Mary. Where were you stationed? Where were you stationed? Uh, at, at Saigon, yeah. Did you have a family at the time? Yeah. And, uh, I do have a I I living with my parents at Saigon, yeah. and uh, at nineteen seventy two, I I got the permission from the 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 headquarters and the Vietnamese uh, Navy headquarters to go teaching from uh, every, every week. I have uh, one day off to teach at the navigation school, Merchant Marine, in Sa at Saigon, Phu Tho. Were you living with your siblings as well? W did you have a siblings as well? Any sisters and brothers? Yeah, I have, uh, I have uh, two sisters, one brother. What was life like during Three those? Three sisters, one brother, yeah. What was life like for you during those years? Just uh, as a normal life. During the war, everybody have to participate. Someone, sometime, someone, sometime a hard time, sometime it's an easy time. But before that, my parents bring me 1954 from Hanoi to Saigon participating in one million people moving from San Jose to Saigon. And during your years in the Navy, did, were you involved in many battles? Were you involved in, the, in, the, in battles in the front line? I was uh, continuously in uh, servicing in uh, the call that um, Vietnamese uh, Navy uh, fleet, and uh, they call that uh, Hải đội Tuần Dương, 
I mean, uh, but patrolling the the um, the high sea. You patrolled and you provided maintenance. You did servicing the uh, fleet. Maintenance is uh, the service of uh, of the machinery department. My department only commanding and yeah, uh, involving in the button field. So you. Um, I was uh, wounded during the the button and uh, hospitalized in um, about three or four months. What year was that? Uh, that's uh, too too long uh, to say about about uh, seventy three or something. So you were seventy two or seventy three, something. So you were. I was an officer on on board the Canadian boat, and uh, uh, no, not so Canadian boat, the Vietnamese uh, Navy boat, and then I was. Uh, we we were called in to the river area to support some of the button there. And then from there, I was the one. You, you, you were in a firefight from mm. your ship? Some of the lance bomb explode in front of me, throw me back, and then I get hurt in the back. So during those years, you were on the verge of life and death. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> as everybody in the, in, the, in the war like that, I think not only me. <laughs> but you were on the front lines? Uh, from time to time. <laughs> so when did you decide to leave Vietnam? As soon as the war end. When was that? What days? 1975, the 30th of, of the April, I think. Can you describe for us your memories of the last few days, the last days of the Republic of Vietnam? Yeah. Before that, during about a couple of months, continuously every week, or I was uh, my boat was a sent, my boat was civilian boat. I was captain of the boat now, and then I was sent back to the central area like uh, Da Nang, Quy Nhơn. Come run, uh, or yeah, yeah, Natang, to bring back the 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 refugee. People were fleeing from yeah, the center. Yeah, fleeing from from their home and something uh, from from the war. Yeah. Can you describe for us some of that the scenes that you saw during those voyages? Uh, yeah, I can remember that uh, the the soldier, officer and uh, soldier, fleeing from uh, like uh, from Kung Tum or um, what do you call it? Mm, uh, somewhere in the center, they flew, and then they when they joined them, 
when they join the my boat, just to keep the way to 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 find out the way to to move us to Saigon, put to the safe place, and then they are arriving with only some some other like um, some other grenade and some other uh, what are called the 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 can the the can for 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 water just they just want water so they arrive with the water here water here <laughs> in, in uh, and they, they, their situation is a, is a very, very unencourageable. They are poorly in, in those situations. We give them the hand and we treat them well as uh, our friend or our family. Yeah. Were there civilians among the refugees as well? Was it, were there civilians as well as uh, they, soldiers? They are, some, some of them, especially at um, Kamran, we received some civilian. Yeah. And um, Da Nang, we can receive some military. And so these were humanitarian operations, rescue missions. You brought people out. Yeah, that's right. Of these areas yeah. to Saigon. Yeah, we bring them to Saigon. Yeah. So that, those were the few weeks before April? A few months. A few months. And then when approaching the 30th of uh, April, we hear that some other rumor, some time and something. But the government still keep an order that is uh, not allowed to flee. Not allowed to flee. So until Two o'clock in the morning of the thirties, when I saw and some of the Vietnamese um, Navy pass by, I know that uh, they are leaving. They Be pass by. What do you pa mean? Pass by on on the river. They they move. Uh, Pass by. You saw them going out to sea. Yeah. And you were not not to sea, but go to the the river Long Tao River. Yeah. And where were you at this time? Long Tao at, River. And at that time, two o'clock, we already moved to um, to Nha Rong. Nha Rong, uh, care of Nadal to try to pick up some more refugees. And where was that? 1975, the 30th of April. And where is that Nyarom? Is that in Saigon? So Nyarom is the Nyarom is the K, the own K of of. Um, Harbor? They are building in into the Khanho area. Thank you. Yeah. And did you make any arrangements for your own family to leave? My family, only me and my wife, at many times my parents refused to go. Why? They said, because uh, 
you are not sure that we will be safe to go. And also, they are approaching 70 years old, so the, the communists will not touch them. Even they, even they, they, they may compress them, uh, they may oppress them in some, by some reason, but, but they, anywhere they will uh, survive. Why but, were you sure that you wanted to go? Why did you want to go? I, I'm sure that I'm military, I cannot stay. And uh, beside that, there's a, some other some other rumor that uh, we 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 would we would be dangerous if we stay. You did not think, you, did, you had no hope that you would be treated well by the new government. That's right. My, I have uh, already some other angle on the north part uh, when uh, they, they flee from, from the, the friends' side going to to their communist side, but they are not tolerated. They, they are not tolerated. The, the military always find out some way to punish them. So on the 30th, when you saw that river, that Navy ship pass you, and you realize now yeah. You can I, leave. Be, before that, uh, when I, I have a, I don't, don't remember that uh, I was uh, drafted in the, in the Navy for seven years. So when I, when they sent me back to the Merchant Marine, I still have uh, some other contact, at least by phone, to them. At that time, they said, you cannot go before military go. So if you, you go before, we will catch you back. So I had to wait until they passed by. And then what happened next? And uh, then uh, on the way, we found out that our our crew, our own crew member, they are not going. So we have to train a new crew for for wheeling. Take the wheel, wheeling, and take the. The view, like a security view. At that time, I decided. Normally, we have only, we need only two people by shift, by by shift, only two people a shift. But this time, I will take six people a ship. But two of them just watch to see if the other two wheeling correctly as uh, the commanding by the officer on watch. So you were the captain of the ship? I, at that time, 
really my, I was a captain of a, a ship, but my, 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 my ship cannot go because of no, no fuel. My next door, at the same rank, is uh, another one about the same length as my one. And this one, the captain come on board, but he decided not to go. So whoever on board, of course they are especially who is in the, in the navigation, in the navigator, they have to go there. At that time, we found uh, more than one captain on board. So, including myself and then some other one. So, uh, we like, uh, we make a, a, a quick selection all right, like uh, uh, to to try to see who is the owner would be the captain, all right, and then but I am familiarized with the military in uh, in a, in a way of uh, dealing with the people because half of the people jump on board as a military, so I. They would need some people knowing about military, but the old man that we choose as a, as a captain, he, he, he's a civilian only, so he, I, he, he would not like to deal with military. So, so they chose you, so you, cho you were chosen? So. So, but I would say that I am 24, that means the second captain on board, all right? Because on board, I only can wear for one captain, and how one commanding. Normally, how big is the crew for this kind of ship? Uh, this kind of ship is, a, I mean, uh, normally they have uh, 31 member of the of, of the crew but, but this time only officer including mechanical officer they 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 they, they are not um, so we have to train them how to how to 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 take care of the the machine Machinery stuff like, uh, especially the 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 axis of the propeller. That's a long axis, a long and a very important for the boat to run. And then during the night, every hour they had to fill up some of the oil in some other place along the propeller shaft. But we have to train a new, newly one. They never know about the machinery. Is it a civilian? Yeah. No seagoing experience, no? No, no seagoing at all, yeah. But we had to train them how to fill it up and how long to go, and then we have to choose who have, who can do that job, can be accepted as a crew member, all right? And then, of course, the crew member would be double and triple and as, and at, at that time. But, so, the scene at the harbor, were there a lot of people wanting to come on board? Yeah. There's a, still some other people want to come on board. That's why we, 2 o'clock, we still in there. 
it was crowded and you can select yeah, crowded. No, no cannot select. They just jump in. They jump in. Yeah. They just jump in. Yeah. Who who never there? Jump in. Yeah. We know that we have to go. So uh, it doesn't matter. One more people no more attitude. That doesn't doesn't make the the ship sound. <laughs> no. No. The ship is can contain uh, about 1,100 ton of uh, cargo, so that w <laughs> some people, <laughs> some uh, some dozen people <laughs> doesn't make it <laughs> a turn. So you were focused entirely on finding people to cr uh, to be in the crew, yeah. focused on that. And then we have to tend them. When we go, we have to tend them. That's Everybody knows that the food is a limiter. But I have to guarantee them that every crew member will not be starved. All right? But the normal refugee will, will be surviving with two meals a day when the crew member have three meals a day. Guarantee that. Were were you worried about how much provision you had for everybody? Were you worried about the food supply? Normally, we have a one week of supply of food supply on board. That is. A, and at the normal time. But that is a not for 500 people. <laughs> that is only 31 people. Huh? So we have uh, to. But before we can give any order, we have uh, to, to, to confiscate all their individual weapons. Because on board the boat, there's only one commanding. If we try to limit their food or limit their um, water or something, they may resist that. And then if they have uh, the weapon on hand, th that is, we cannot, uh, we cannot control them. So the first thing we have to organize is to confiscate their weapon. We have to wait until the boat going out to the open sea to make sure that they will not need their individual weapon. You were worried that you might have to encounter a gunfight on your way out. Uh, no, if the gunfight on the way out, if that one happened, we only we only can 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 accept that. We, we cannot resist that. Huh? But no, the individual weapon on more, uh, on, on the hand of the other military, and then we have uh, to deal with. So we have uh, uh, parachutists, we have a ranger, we have uh, uh, some some different court in uh, uh, in the military, but if we use the ranger to confiscate the weapon of the parachutist, that wouldn't have a problem. So we have uh, to. Luckily, we have uh, a few. Uh, a few officers of uh, uh, 
police officer. It happened this way. I, I was luckily knowing, uh, knowing some of them because at that time, when I was uh, teaching at the navigation school, the police department sent two officers come to learn about the navigation. So now they show up and then I can use them. I just said, I explained to them, that would be risky if I use uh, uh, the ranger to the ranger to confiscate the weapon from the parachutist or, or vice versa. Uh, so please hand me. They agree. They agree. So they come and they talk. They talk nicely and then they, they take on their weapon. I said, if the long rifle thrown on the water right in front of them, but make a count every time we throw it, make a count and we report it here for me, all right? And then the only the small gun, let me say the, the pistol or something, and then we pick it up, the roller or something. So finally they pick it up uh, 21 revolver and bring it to the wheelhouse. Keep it there safe, nobody touch on that. And then the other one, 45 long rifle, they thrown in the water. Did anyone resist? No, no. They understand. At that time, they know that on the open sea, the individual weapon, like a long rifle, even long, but cannot be reach as long, that long. <laughs> so they agree to throw it. And if they, they take it away, and then they, but they throw it in front of them. So they, they know that the people will not take that against them. So, f and then after that, we have to, to think about the real food, not a temporary food like that. And then, but luckily we get handbook from the American Navy. We got, uh, even American Navy, they have a, a Red Cross food store and grocery in uh, already in Singapore bef two months before, before the end of the war. Two months, they already have uh, that store. In. And we everything we need, they give us to go. Uh, like uh, the fuel, the water, like uh, 300 of water, we need 300 ton. So they go give us 300 ton. So this supply you got from another, an American ship American. docked oh. nearby? Yeah. Oh. They, they come, um, they, they give order to the, some of the, some of the sitek uh, of water, they come, they bring, they, 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 they pump to us, yeah. And was that uh, the same night that you left? The night of the 30th? No, no, no. Only after a week at, uh, at uh, Singapore. Oh, this is a week after you yeah. left? Yeah. You were headed to Singapore. Yeah, we're Singapore. And then you docked in. But the Singapore are not allowed to get in to shore as a refugee. When they, uh, uh, at that time, uh, Mr. Lee Kwang Jio, when I have an order uh, that's uh, who never 
every fifty or more not allowed to, to to get ashore. So you were not allowed to go get ashore. To uh, get ashore. Uh, supply yeah, boat no, had to come no, and meet no, you. No. And they kick it out after a week, and then uh, we go along, go to Subic Bay. You stayed in, in the in in the. Um, uh, near Singapore for one week. For one week in the quarantine area, quarantine area. That what is the, under the under the 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 government of of uh, under the government order of Singapore. Why did you stay for a whole week? Because uh, we we try to get in. You were still negotiating. Do we uh, see negotiating? But only a few, like uh, um, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew said, that who never have a uh, five thousand in the bank and uh, can can get in <laughs> to a show. Yeah. Did you have contact with them every day? Yeah, Were you contact caught? with the police every day. To try to change their mind? Yeah. Some of the, some of the military um, said that um, they, um, they feel um, not very um, comfortable with their, their order like that. But um, I remember we have uh, Totally, eleven ship, including military and civilian, uh, on in the at, quarantine area. At the quarantine area, yeah. Eleven ships came from Vietnam. From Vietnam. Or hoping to get in. Yeah, hmm. including including military too. Yeah. And so, after seven days, you decided to head for the Philippines. Yeah, we decided ourselves. You can decide to go, but anywhere you cannot stay here forever. No? <laughs> yeah. So when we get arriving to to Civic Bay, normally in the military we used to go to Civic Bay for repairing ship or something. But this time, as soon as we arrive, there's a American uh, destroyer come to to um, come for us, and then they said, uh, "You have uh, to leave here after 24 hours." That is the 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 Filipinos order, and then they. American cannot stop that. So, but what whatever you need, like uh, food, medicine, and fuel, and chart to go to Guam, we supply. So I had to go to the to the. Uh, Operating operation center to pick it, the the chart work and some other special instruction to go to Guam. Like uh, I get some other special um, to go Guam as uh, you have uh, to to relax them. Um, at least 24 hours before arrival. And don't arrive at night time. So in Subic Bay, when they gave you 24 hours to get your supplies, yeah. were there many other ships from Vietnam? Yeah, one so. How many? Oh, I don't know about. I only uh, at that time I only 
you think uh, you had 600 people to bore, 500 people to bore. That's enough to worry about. <laughs> then, but uh, at the, we come, uh, we leave uh, Civic Bay uh, at, uh, after 24 hours, and then we go along the Philippines uh, island, and then we head for Guam. What were your biggest worries at that time? Mm, at that time, uh, we only worry about if our if our we have enough fuel for our machinery to run. We don't worry about the gun or so no more. <laughs> so, so, but um, now, before arriving to Guam, we have a, a little bit uh, of uh, uh, inconvenient this way. That's. Uh, by by our navigation, we estimate that uh, about eight o'clock we would arrive to to eight o'clock at night when we arrive at Guam. But about six o'clock we would see one flashlight. So everybody happy. Uh, but so they give it to the, in, instead of my note, instead of carry out the, my note, that uh, don't, when we see one, we have to reduce the speed when uh, reducing the number of uh, uh, RPM. But at that time, civilian people feed them some the food more, so they, they, they some of the drink or something like that. So they, instead of slow it down, they increase the speed. So we arrive about seven o'clock. So the, the the security come out and they shoot. They shoot the gun. They really shoot the gun. But they, but uh, as a military, I don't know that uh, they will not. They will not shoot on the people. They shoot in front to to make that. Uh, Warning shot. Warning shot. Yeah. What happened next? And then people who was crying, <laughs> they saw that the war again. <laughs> they saw that the war again. <laughs> no, no, I said, okay. I, I come up the warehouse and I said, okay. We, I, I um, communicate with them by the flashlight. By, by the military, and then um, they understand that. So they said, please uh, don't come in at night. Tomorrow, 8 o'clock, we will send the pilot out to pick you up. Yeah. So, so I turn, make a turn around, go around, and then make them happy. <laughs> People not so happy. <laughs> no. No, they, do. They, they, they don't shoot no more, so they feel safe now. Yeah. What are your experiences, what are your memories of your time at, um, at, uh, on uh, Guam, in Guam? At, when we arrived at Guam, we saw about 11 of 
submarine, some of them up, some of them down, in the water. Yeah. And then the pilot guide us. We feel safe that way. <laughs> the pilot, they know everything about the local, they, they call it the Apra Harbor, the name of the the harbor of, of the of the water there. They call it Apra Harbor, and then and the the refugee camp was uh, ready at the Orut Boy. They call it Orut V Boy. So we arrive in there, we put the anchor down. And then, and then we make the gangway, and the people go. Yeah. How long did you stay there? I don't know how long the refugee would stay when stay there, but I know that right the next day. The military come to pick it up, send it to another place. The reason is uh, <coughs> some of the Vietnamese um, government personnel, like uh, um, uh, Minister uh, Hoàng Đức Nhã was uh, arriving there, and then the military, some of the military want to kill them. That's why every staff of the commanding, they have to be somewhere, cannot be in a camp. So the the why did the why did the why did the soldiers want to kill the mil, the minister Hoàng Đức Nhã? I I don't know. The, the, I that's one only uh, the reason I when they pick us the military picked us up. And then they said, you, you have to go somewhere. We will find a place for you, but not in a, not in a refugee camp. So they separated the military, the, the military people from your ship to a different area? No, no, no. I, I don't know if they are in the, from my ship, but, but it's happened that some of the military Oh, most of them are military, too, anyway. So, so some of them want to do the violence thing, so they they can they have to bring every staff member they call it staff member have to be away, cannot be in the refugee area. That was only for civilians. So they separated all military versus all civilian. Is that what you're saying? No, no. We we only know about us. They pick it up, they bring it to another place. That's it. We don't know what happened at the back. And the reason that they gave you was that they feared that some in your group yeah. ha was threatening violence. No, there's uh, no no violence on the, the boats, but uh, it could be there will be shortly. Uh, that, that will be the only thing is uh, the refugee camp, the 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 one they are responsible for the refugee camp. They are not want us to be there to have other problem. <laughs> so they bring us to another place. So where did, you, where did they take you? Another, like I think, uh, another place look like, uh, they call it um, another, like a, look like a hotel. Look like a hotel where we have uh, some of the soldiers from military soldiers take care of 
of the water, from take care of the food, and something. We, we come there, we do nothing. How big was your group in at this hotel? This. It's about when I arrived with the, our our stuff on board the boat. So it's only about several people, but in that hotel already have uh, some dozen other. So, but we are safe to the, to be there. We are happy to be there. <laughs> so, how long did you stay there? Totally, we just stay there to do the paperwork, and then uh, the Air Force flew us to to mainland California. Another refugee camp. In there, already have uh, more than twenty thousand refugee in there. They call it Camp Pendleton. Camp Pendleton. So we were there. Also, enough time to go to conduct with consulate. Uh, Canadian consulate, because when we arrived to uh, after a couple of days at the Guam, we already contact with uh, with um, my brother-in-law Edmund Trian. He said he already do the paperwork two months for the whole family before two months before. So when you see the consulate, you just stand them, they will find out. And who were the members of your family on, uh, who were with you at that time? Just you and your my, wife? My wife, yeah. No other siblings or anything? No, no, no other. My, uh, there's uh, my uh, brother, my, my, my brother in my, my family. I cannot pick him up from from Vung Tau. He was there, but I cannot pick him up. He was waiting for you. He was hoping Could to get be. on your boat. Could be. But he know that I win as a military or I as a civilian, I have to go. He know that he had to go too. But he was uh, in a, in a um, telecommunication center there. Did in, you meet anyone uh, in, in Guam or at Camp Pendleton? Did oh. you get reunite with anyone in Guam or in Pen Camp Pendleton, people you knew? No. Hmm. No. My, my uh, brother only left the country after six years in jail. And then he tried through two, three times to escape from the country to, but not success. And but finally he arrived in Malaysia, some Malaysian, something like that. But uh, only after Several years. How long did you stay in Camp Pendleton before you arrived in Canada? Only enough time to proceed some other paperwork. Because everything my brother in law already done. So I only. <laughs> re, re, uh, recover. <laughs> you were recovering from what? Recover the paperwork. Do yeah. the paperwork, and then when I arrive, 
two o'clock in the morning of the 2nd of July, 1975, we arrived to Montreal. And um, officers bring us, after paperwork, they bring us to uh, Queen Elizabeth Hotel at Montreal. What were your first impressions of Canada? Uh, first thing is that we we just getting tired. We 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 did not think about nothing yet, and until after the after after overnight, and then we can. We wake up and then we can, we go to immigration again, and then they doing some paperwork. What kind but of? The first, the first, uh, the first uh, incident in this way. When we, when we arrive to the, the government's immigration, uh, the next day. After we proceed the paperwork, we feel hungry, or, and then we smell some of the good food, that is a pizza. And then me and my wife try to buy a pizza. And then we bring back to, we take, it take about 15 or 20 minutes to go by subway to go back to the hospital, uh, to, to, the, to the hotel, yeah. And then the pizza become hard, <laughs> not easy to eat. <laughs> that is the first incident we got. <laughs> what assistance did you receive from the government at that time? What kind of help did you receive from the government? Well, they just do the paperwork. And then uh, the government would give, I think, uh, my wife would stay home and she receive $20 a week for food and, and renting the apartment. That time I already flew. Uh, one week later, I already flew away. I joined the boat, my boat, Canadian boat, in Tarragona and uh, Spain. You found a job within one week. Yeah. How did you find that job? I, I just go to the shipping master, and then the shipping master. I have to issue me a travel document. And then when I get, after I got a job, I come back to, to the immigra immigration. Immigration said, you cannot go. I said, you said, yeah, if I, I find a job. Now you said, I cannot go. I come back to the company and the company. I get mad, he said. Who tell you so? I said, immigration, the officer. He said, give me the, his phone number. Pick up the phone. He said, who tell you that he cannot go? <laughs> who tell you that he cannot go? And then, can I see your manager? The man, manager picked it up and I said, I'm sorry, he did not know. That's Canadian boat. Anywhere is a still Canadian territory. Doesn't matter it, <laughs> in Tarragona or outside in uh, Montreal, the same. Can I ask you about that? Yeah. So you arrive in Montreal. 
um, within one week? Yeah. Well, you knew, you knew the, the, the language? You could speak English or French at that time? Oh, I was uh, learning English sing by the, by the French uh, record. I, I was a graduate from, from the French system. From the French system. So you went to school in the French? You went to French schooling? Uh, I, at that time, they are still teaching at the navigation school, still teaching in France. Not in Vietnam. I am the only instructor who teach in Vietnamese at that school. They are all teaching in French. They, it doesn't matter Vietnam or, of course, the French people cannot teach. <laughs> still, still in in them. Military, they already changed in Vietnam, but but in the uh, Merchant Marine, still French people teaching. So you had, that was where you learned your French. And so when you arrived in Montreal, you used your French. Yeah. You headed down to the harbor. How how did you know which company to contact? Oh, the, the shipping master gave me a list of seven seven company, I go interview every seven of them, every one of them, interview. But people like me to talk about my last trip, huh? but no job either. Seven of them have no job. And then when I pass by, uh, look like a basement of, of some of them. They have some other, some other agent. So they, I just serve in some other letter of inquiry, job inquiry. <laughs> so physically, you went down to the harbor and you yeah. knocked on doors? No, no, my door. No. Not phone calls? Door no, knocking. no. My, you said they interview. The interview, very interesting interview. You, you introduce <laughs> oh, yeah. yourself and then they interview you right yeah. then and yeah. got your stories. Yeah. There's uh, two company want me to talk in French, but uh, five other one want me to talk in English. Because both of them are, are Englishmen. Did you have enough English to talk to those guys? Yeah, I, 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 when I was in the Navy, I, I was, uh, I have an a, a American advisor at, with me day and night, 24 hours. So we have multiple talking <laughs> every day. So within one week, your wife was at home by herself in yeah. Montreal. And I go away six months, come back. Where did you live? Where did she, where was your apartment? Apartment in the east of, uh, of um, Montreal. Did the government help you find that apartment? Mm, yeah, they guide, they guide, and then, um, my brother-in-law was there, so I, so I know. <laughs> he was an engineer there 10 years before we come. So he, we have a solid, a solid rip. <laughs> and your wife, did she receive any language training? Yeah, she had to go for French course, yeah. I think uh, at that time, uh, her uh, her mind is not uh, completely settled yet. 
So she go to her friend's corks just just to 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 get paid <laughs> to to learn also but to kill the time. And then uh, after that she had to redo her license. She's a pharmacist back home. She's a ph pharmacist back home. So after we re we we had she had to do the some other exam for the exam and then interview by the University of um, uh, of pharmacy. There. When did that happen? When did she 75. get? How soon after she arrived did she get her license? Oh, I think uh, one year later, because after that she got pregnant. She let born a baby, and, and so she had to take care of the baby first, and then for more than one for more than one years later, she got it. She, when I come back, and then uh, I still have to guide her to the university for. Um, for an interview with the, with the with the the dean with the dean of the university. She did she have to enroll in a pharmacy program again? Yeah. She had to take courses. Some of them, uh, not the total, but some part to become. Uh, after that, she worked there for seven years. And then 1986, when we, when I moved here, <coughs> when I moved to uh, Toronto for my son to learn uh, English, because if my son at five years old, not allowed to go to the English school in Montreal, so I, I was thinking about. Moving, well, it took me five years to move, and then when we arrived there, 1986, my wife had to redo again the English version of of license uh, pharmacist license, including 1,100 hours of practicing. After seven years working at Montreal, here is another country. <laughs> what kind of work did you find here in Toronto? Me? No, only <coughs> I from from Montreal. I still working for Toronto. <laughs> for Toronto Shipping Master. <laughs> Upper Lake Shipping Toronto. <laughs> I worked like that for a few years. <laughs> Every year uh, when I go home, uh, <coughs> there's one thing I want to mention to you. <coughs> As uh, I live at Montreal, I have uh, to pay the Canadian tax plus Quebec tax higher higher pay tax <coughs> but now Quebec have to send back me the the regime they run the, the Quebec pension have, pension <laughs> because I was there more than 11 years, 10, 13 years. <laughs> but uh, when my company moved back to the state, 
my wife. And then the, the company asked me if, because the company that I, <coughs> I work with is uh, uh, the Amdal, Amdal company, Amdal Electronic. That was, uh, they have uh, nine big buildings in San Francisco at Montreal, uh, at Mississauga. They have uh, only one, they only can rent one small building <laughs> to work with. But my, my, when my company moved back to the state, they asked me if he want to to move with us to go to San Francisco. My wife said, no, I don't want to do the license again. <laughs> you understand that? <laughs> so, so I had to, to leave the company and then I have to join the city of Toronto. So you stopped working at uh, on, in, in shipping? Shipping. That was the end of that? That's right. Can I ask you, when you um, found that first job in Montreal, what was, the, the, what was the, your job title? The officer on board, on board the boat. Yeah? Yeah. And did you... After I, I write the license, I write back my license. When was that? A few months after, after 75, uh, after uh, arriving is uh, the seven, that would be about 10 months or something. September or October or something like that. So you were lucky to work in the same career but were there differences that you had to adjust to? I think that the on board the boat, we really not not directly control the boat, but we give order to the crew to control to win. So not like a. Not like uh, the air pilot, they only know one airplane, and then they only can control that one. But for the boat, for the marine boat, we don't control the boat, we control the crew. And then the crew on board any civilian or military, they are they have a, a habit of obeying the, 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 the commanding. They, they, they are not thinking about against them. No. So the naval culture is the same in Vietnam as here? Yeah. The, the culture, yeah, that's it. Yeah. They are very, very nicely. Even when I change to a new fee, New Newfoundland crew, they are the same. They, they are very, they are very highly boozing, but, uh, but they, 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 they think about, they obey, but they order on board. How and, long? And I said, stop the, the engine. I, 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 I strike a stop. They, <laughs> they would not. They would not say why. <laughs> no. How long did you work um, in? Uh, uh, how long was that career in, 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 in on boats? That is that. Uh, I come here, nineteen seventy-five, and then after a few months, I got back the license, and I worked five years on board Canadian boat and then 
I stop at Mondrian, teaching at the navigation school at Mondrian for three years. And uh, I got, even I got some uh, uh, invention uh, certificate. And what did you invent? Oh, the, the, I invent the, the, the one I need. That is uh, the one to teach the astro navigation. Yeah. Not, not control the astro, but we use the, the, the Celestian body to find out our place where on, on the chart, on the map. But for the longitude, latitude, but we, at least we had to find what is that, what is that star? So my machine can show it. You invented a machine to yeah. help read the stars. Yeah, I invented things uh, back in '72, back home. Yeah. And here, I try when I, when I, um, you know, on board, working on board the boat as a second. Uh, Second after the captain, as uh, the officer in charge of the cargo, we had to put which plate, which which hatch to put the the weight on, the the merchandise on. Especially when the boat is about going to be full load. And then they want almost even kill or the only the 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 back the back draft is a one foot more than the front draft and then when approaching the end you need the knowledge where to put on. My machine can do it and show where to put on. You invented a machine to determine the load yeah. um, from the front to the front. to the back. Yeah. Of the ship. And then with how much how much angle you want. So you choose the angle before you choose where to put on. But now, no, no more use for that. They were only for teaching, like uh, for the, for the, for the, my machine, my machinery for teaching uh, the astro navigation. Now I reduce it to the sun dial, using only for the scout, teaching as a voluntary. <laughs> you got involved in the scouts eventually. Yeah. And you created a sundial. A, a, you have a sun a sundial. Yeah. To teach scouts teach how it. to read the time. And I know, at least, I have. Uh, I give. Uh, for three sundials. For the three school PS, that means a public school here, here and one at, in um, in Brampton, and another one in Halifax. I I make a travel to Halifax. So what do you mean? You you create a sundial or? Yeah, I create. I. I make a drawing, I, and then I make it myself, just by pay, by folding the paper, folding the paper, the the the, the 
first I use uh, the laminate paper. It's harder to bend, so I have to use the pizza cutter to cut it down to almost cut, and then I can fold. So you fold, you use folding paper techniques yeah. to create a sundial, sundial that school children can can, can, can they make it. can they make themselves? Yeah. At least some of the, some of them can make it, but not all of them because they need a skill. And then at least they know how to orient it, how to align it, to do the alignment of the, after done. If they learn this skill, yeah. if they learn how to do make the, a sundown, the scout can do it. But the can, scout. can they, if, and they're lost in the woods, if, if a scout who's learned from you yeah. can, gets lost in the woods, can he or she make a sundial out of any piece of paper? Yeah. To figure out what yeah, time yeah. or what? I have a pattern of print now already. They only print it out. Oh, they have to have the printout with yeah. them. Yeah. You did not receive my, my sundial? Oh, well, I want you to, to explain. Uh, no, so you, but you, have to ex you have to see the, you have to have a printout yeah. paper. Yeah. Got it. I I have a did I send you the file printing the sundial? Did you receive that one with the colored picture and also the f the photo of my sundial on my backyard and uh, and my window? Yeah. So. Can we go back to your, when, you, when you stopped your uh, working in navigation? Yeah. You worked for the city of Toronto? No. At that time, I stopped at Mondrian. I had to go back to school for a couple of years or something. And then uh, I I finished a program of uh, computer uh, programming and working for a couple of years in Quebec. But when I moved here in 1986 for my son to learn English, well, that, that, that is not wait for my job or my work at all. <laughs> so, at that time, my wife already can can do the her license uh, the pharmacist, uh, so she can. But so I can. I had to. In order to get into city of Toronto. You know I, what I had to do. At that time. By, by definition of the steam time. Steam time means uh, the, the boiler steam. What? By definition of the, the Canada Steamship Act, that the act, the government act, they said every ship moving by machinery, they call it steamship. So I have a steam time. I can go right exam for steam, for, for steam. And so, so I write two time, two level of, of, uh, of boilers, uh, uh, engineer. Just by, by, by fox, I work on board the boat, so they, they, it's a steam ship. <laughs> so I had the steam time. Yeah. So I, 
I, I wrote two level, level four, level three. So I go working as a steam ship, uh, as a boiler uh, engineer. Right? And then that's the way I get into <laughs> to, to, the, <laughs> to, to the, the, the city of Toronto. Right? And, and then during that time, I go for the control cooks and then uh, all kind of it. And then after that, I got a job as uh, they pay me as instrumentation technician for, for 12 years. They pay me, but only I got that job one week before I retire. But they pay me all along. They pay me because I, I work as an instrumentation technician. So they pay me that, but they're not hiring with that title. Oh, the end doesn't matter. As far as I, you pay me, okay. <laughs> but uh, finally, before I retire, one week, <laughs> give me the title. <laughs> and so now that you retire, you're still involved in the Boy Scouts. Yeah. I, I was uh, when my son was in the Scout. Uh, about uh, 1988 or 1990, uh, my son was a scout. So, and then I'm voluntarily teaching them. Uh, and then after that, the 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 scouter, that means the scout chief also want to learn about the, the, the astro. Right? I teach them how to see the color of the star. <laughs> they said, is that they have a color? I said, yes, they have a color. Especially the one, the seven planet around the sun, they, they do have, they do have a color, but not the longer star. So you learn all that during your seagoing experience in Vietnam? Yeah, during the teacher, I was a teacher there too. If you look back 40 years, what are your thoughts about the life that you and your family have made in Canada? I did not have a, a thought about to move to Canada. I only have a thought when I arrive to Guam, contact with my brother-in-law and said, oh yeah, I have everything done. Oh, eh? But for, for the fight against the communist or the socialist idea, first we have to, to accept that the propaganda, propaganda of the communist is a very strong, very attractive, especially with the young people. Uh, I tell you the story this way. On board the Canadian boat, when I when I go to 1980, 19, 80, yeah. I was going from 
PEI to Greece, the, on the island of Nassos, I arrived there. And then when I go up to see the post office, there's a, a young officer there. And he, I saw him. He had a small statue here. So I asked him, what do you have with that? So I thought that he must have a, a Jim Dean's <laughs> or, or a, a, some other artist to, to, to be there. He said, he surprised, he said, you don't recognize it? I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't recognize it. Not Jim Dean? I said, that is Stalin. You don't know. <laughs> so the, the people from Greece like that, so the other place easy to get it. And when on more Canadian boat I'll get and I I visit uh, my boat was uh, at uh, Lagos, Nigeria, uh, and then we go to Abidjan to to uh, to get few one. So on the way we come in, uh, people just come on on our kitchen to help. And then before before we get out there, we put the anchor, we got at the anchor. We try to see, to watch how every people get out. Every people, not the crew. But one day later, it come out. One people, one black fellow come out. And then the captain said, quite, the captain quite upset. He said, hey, we are going to, to Lens End in England. And then we, we have to deal somehow with this one before. We can, we can do it. We can hire him. Because I, when I interview him, he's uh, speaking English perfectly. He was a carpenter on the other boat. But because he fighting somehow, so he, he, he fl flee to Abidjan. So this time, he used my boat as the way to go out. What? So I said, okay. So I turned the captain, I can resolve that. We hired him as a carpenter. What? I asked him already, he said, $100 a month is okay for you? I said, he more than one, he more than one. Yeah, okay. But after after the next week, something like that, we, we are arriving at an island in a Kapboburg Island, I, outside of Kapboburg, Kapboburg Day. And then he he got a job as a rolling the 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 the, the zonia to bring people in and out. Only only a few days. He said he, he asked for permission to be off for a few days. When he come back, he showed me. The book, big, thick book, 
play that capitalism he got trained by by the communists he come back he joined the 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 front of um, the front slogan is a uh, Africa belong to Africa. Africa belong to Africa. That is the slogan. And then they and then he quit the job. <laughs> After I tried to help him. <laughs> Only one week. So um, looking back on your integration, what were the obstacles and struggles that you faced? Not a real obstacle, but when I, when my son, when my son was born in the, ho in the hospital at Montreal, I had to find the work, at least temporary work. So I worked on uh, some of the manufacturer for two dollars and fifty cents for a few months or something. But after that, uh, two years later, when I come back to to uh, I think uh, two years or seven years later, when I come back to teach at the Navigation school, they pay me $27 an hour. That is quite a different <laughs> that time. But every year, I have to sign a contract. So I attend the school, that's, I only sign a three contract. After three, I even, I will not sign up no more. So when after three I quit I but before I quit the principal of the, the school tell me that um, he can find another job for me and then it even pay more than teacher at a school. I said, and you have a six month and your family too in Florida all paid by by the company. So I said, well, the, what? So uh, he said, that is a pilot of St. Laurent River. River. Pilot for Seaway, San Laurent River. And he told me that, do you know who win, who win? Uh, that would be a competition, but the competition would be, would be judged by the school school where I'm teaching. So at that time, I was, uh, I was uh, examine, ex examine, uh, let me see, let, let me, I have to give uh, the solution for every exam that the school took from the DOT, Department of Transport. So every time the, the school send the, the student go to Department of Transport, because the school teaching, but Department of Transport give a license. <laughs> no, no Department of Transport. You cannot go on board the board. So, I, every time after they go to the exam, they come back, I had to give them the, the 
the, 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 the solution. So the, the, the school really want me to stay. So you did, so you did, so that was your, your work for how long? How long were you a pilot of St. Lawrence River for? No, I did not get them. Oh. They not answer. They not answer my application. At that time, <coughs> the St. Lawrence uh, Seaway won to have uh, 11 more pilot, but totally only five of them are apply application. So if I come in, then it will be easy. <laughs> so how long did it take for you to feel at home in Canada? In my case, as a, the second week, I already fly away. And then when I come home, after six months, really my home in Canada. And what are your thoughts about the, li the life that you have made in Canada? In Canada, I feel that, that is a real, social, real socialism already there. There's a need of propaganda. There's a need of some, some dialogue, some other dialect or to say about socialism without the communism behind. And what do you think about Canada's response um, to the refugee crisis? By nature, there, as I said, Canada have a, a spirit of socialism in being like a being So we don't need any propaganda, propaganda to, to say or any dialect, dialogue to say so. Do you discuss, do you share your experiences as a refugee to other people, to the next generation? Do you share your experiences with, chil with your children? I, I agree to share with them, but their different time frame, so they cannot, I don't think they can absorb what they like, I want to, but I, the only, the only slogan that I should say it to them is uh, watch to see if the communist is a the real is a real socialist try to see what the the communists doing and not hearing not listening to their propaganda, because of their propaganda always very attractive all over the world. Well, thank you very much for, for um, sharing your stories and your experiences with us. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? No. Thank <laughs> you. Tôi có gửi cái, 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 cái mà cô có nhận được mà có, có giới thiệu cho tôi một người nào muốn học cái 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 sân đây hơn thì so you um, you uh, um, are inviting anybody yeah. who's interested in the sundial yeah. to contact you yeah. to learn how to use the sundial yeah. especially if they need some of the skill, some of the craft, scrap, uh, craft skill. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. I hope when uh, I already with uh, how many group of um, scout, but still, still 
I, I think uh, I, I'm 78 now. Maybe I may die next year or <laughs> something. So uh, somebody have to continue that. You know, when I was, uh, <coughs> when I was uh, at Hanoi, I was in a scout. At that time, I would be very des desperately find out uh, who can show me where the sun lion look like. At that time, we uh, we are going to some of the summer camp, oh, all kind of star, all kind of. Uh, on the sky, a lot of idea come in, but at that time nobody can show me the world. Now I think uh, we can show it. Well, I hope that a lot of people will learn from will learn from you. I send it to I send my uh, memory card memory card with the sundial to one boy, one girl scout in Houston, and two other scout in in uh, California. Yeah, Liên Đoàn Hướng Việt. Tôi nhớ là. Cô, cô nhận đấy, cô, cô, cảm ơn. Thank you very much. Yeah.